Let's use particles in Pure Data. Gem is a collection of externals that allows us to create generative visuals in Pure Data. I do have a basic tutorial on it that I recommend you check out before this one. Now, you may have searched for this video after stumbling upon Suiteru's work on social media. You may have wondered how the heck they create so many shapes at once. Do they have a bunch of render chains? Not quite. That approach is daunting and inefficient. I'm 99% sure that they used particle object, and that's what we're here to learn today. The gem external actually comes with a bunch of example patches, and there's a folder fully dedicated to teaching about particles. So it's a technique that gem developers really wanted us to explore. Simply put, particle objects create and control numerous shapes at once. Okay, let's start exploring. All the examples are downloadable, by the way. As we can see from this first example patcher, this single short chain of objects create a bunch of circles. Let's have a look at what each object is doing. Gemhead starts the render chain. We need this regardless of whether we're using particles or not. Particle head starts a particle system, and this object also allows us to set the speed of the particle emission or creation. Part size changes the particle size. Part source emits certain number of particles at each rendering frame. Part kill deletes all particles which are older than the set time. So if we set this longer, we see the particles living longer. And part render draws the particle system that was set up with part head and other particle objects. Finally, the shape of the particles is determined at the end of the chain. So we could change this to a rectangle or a cube if we wanted to. And we can also change the characteristics. Okay, let's start building towards an audio reactive visual. Part color sets the colors of a particle system. We can set two different colors and the particles will have either one or the other. For example, we can see either a white circle or a blue circle. And if two colors are boring to you, I recommend part target color. It changes the color of the particles by a scale factor every frame. Okay, what we have isn't too exciting because it's just a bunch of circles huddled together. So let's use part velocity to spice it up. This object sets velocity of newly emitted particles, and each particle is directed to a random point within the set domain. So what does this all mean? This object allows us to create a specific pattern that's made out of particles. This document illustrates what this domain pattern looks like. So let's try some of them. Part velocity takes in two arguments, the type of domain and its characteristics. The name of the domain is only accepted as a symbol, so we have to set it up like this. As we can see from this document as well as when we click on this button, the pattern that we have been seeing so far was the point domain. Okay, let's try the line domain. So we have point number 1 set at negative 0.5 on the x-axis, and 0 for both y-axis and z-axis. And point number 2 is set at positive 1.0 on the x-axis, and 0 for both y-axis and z-axis. And this is what it looks like. Let's try sphere next. We have the center position of the sphere, and the outer and inner radiuses. Blob is a fun one, and it looks like this. And finally, let's try cone. So as we can see, it's easy to switch between different patterns. All right, let's make this audio reactive. So close the second example patcher for now and open up the third patcher. This part right here plays a simple beep sound using line and delay objects. Please check out my ADSR tutorial if you need a refresher. And VSD reverb is applied to the beep sound. So you need to install VSD plugin tilde and download Valhalla Supermassive Reverb. And if you'd like to learn more about VSD plugin tilde, I got you covered with the tutorial. In short, every time we press this button, reverberated beep sound plays. Simple as that. And we want beep on and beep off states. So when there's a beep, we want that visual that we just made to appear. And when there is no sound, there's no visual. So that's what these send objects are for. When we click on this button to play the beep sound, the output of the button is also sent to send beep on. And receive beep on objects are connected to the size, source, and lifespan arguments. As soon as we play the sound, the size of particles go from 0 to 0 0.5, more are emitted, and the lifespan is longer. And after about 2.5 seconds, beep off is activated and pretty much reverses the arguments. 
Let's add a kick drum for more complexity. So what I have in mind is kind of like this. Circle particles are huddled together and the size increases when there is a kick drum playing. And whenever the beep sound plays, the pattern we have been using will appear. So when it's just the kick drum playing, we don't want the rectangle to be visible. Setting the size to zero will achieve that effect. Okay, let's go back to the second example patcher again. The first approach that we could try out is having separate particle render chains for circle and rectangle. And we can successfully change the size individually. But we run into an issue when we try to change the color. So as we can see, even though we're changing the color of the rectangle, it affects the circle for some reason. This example also demonstrates similar issue. I was able to achieve some intended effects. For example, velocity works perfectly fine as shown here. So we can switch between two different patterns just for the circle particles as intended. And if you have part size here instead of near the end of the chain, it works as intended. So I guess the placement of the particle object matters? I highly recommend that you go through trial and error and see what works and doesn't work. Regardless, I would like to show you an approach that I personally found to be clean and precise. What we can do is to only have one single particle render chain and then use the separator object. Separator object isolates parallel render chains with regards to transformation effects, which include translation, rotation, scale, and etc. Using the scale object, we can now change the size of the circle particles without affecting the rectangle particles, and vice versa. By the way, the speed is set slower for us to see easier. And let's use rotate XYZ only on the rectangle. Alright, let's open our last example patcher. So this example is similar to our previous audio reactive patcher. One of the main differences is that we have a step sequencer for kick and beep sounds. Another main difference is that when there is no beep sound, there will be circle particles with point velocity like this. And the size of the particles changes when there is a kick sound. So the key here is that we're switching between two different velocity patterns. And that's pretty much it. To understand this patcher in more detail, I suggest that you have a closer look at what these receive objects are connected to. So what's next? Experiment. Test out what works and what doesn't. And develop your own style through the process. And I recommend looking at other particle objects that are available and going through the help patcher. Again, the gem developer provided us with a bunch of example patchers, so I recommend that you check them out. I should also mention that Suiteru has a Patreon with tutorials. Because I haven't personally signed up for it, it's not possible for me to recommend it. So it's completely up to you. I do owe it to Suiteru for inspiring people to want to learn pure data and gem. So that's why I'm shouting out their Patreon. With that being said, you also deserve to know that you can always learn from free resources that are provided by the developer. As long as you're not spending tons of money, whichever path that you take is completely valid. Just make sure that you're having fun and developing your own style. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.